Um, and I'm always very in tune to everything that registrants are dealing with as a broker of record, um, for sure. But also within our own realtor community on this podcast, we're, we're always in contact with all sorts of registrants. And it's really nice to understand the different perspectives we're seeing and being able to share that with the board and with the organization. Um, and that's something I'm always willing and wanting to do. So I'm very, I mean, I know it sounds uh, cliche, but I'm very passionate about this industry and making it better for registrants as well as consumers. And I think I can really do that well through being on the board at RICO. Building a successful real estate career requires you to adapt, pivot, and constantly master new skills. We're Katie and Daniel Steinfeld. We've built our own innovative brokerage. And in this podcast, we've assembled actionable tips and strategies that you can implement to take your business to its maximum potential. It's time to level up. Level up. Let's get this started. This is a special live episode of Level Up. It's an interview. Not the first time we've done one of those, but it is the first time that we are interviewing one of ourselves. I'll be doing the question asking and candidate in region one of the newly opened voting this morning for the RICO board of directors, Ms. Katie Steinfeld. It's my pleasure to have you as my guest on Level Up this Hello. morning. Thank you for having me. Appreciate well, welcome it. Welcome to the show. Would you like me to run you through what this show is all about? Maybe a little bit of, of background on Level Up or you're familiar? I'm familiar. Thank you. Okay. I listen every well, week, every that's- week. That's great. I appreciate the plug. I'm sure my co-host would as well if she were here. So once again, the uh, election for the Real Estate Council of Ontario has opened for voting this morning, March the 6th. And to all of our listeners outside of Ontario, that is, well, I'm not even going to tell you what it is because this is all about me asking our guest today all about what Rico's about and talking about her campaign as a candidate in Region 1, where voting once again has opened this morning. Welcome to the show, Katie Steinfeld. Thank you for having me. For the record, this is your idea, not mine. So I thank you for this idea, this self-promotion idea. (laughs) I had nothing to do with this. This is just uh, an impromptu episode. And what better fans? Our fans wanted this this episode. It's it's relevant. You have no idea the amount of mail I got for this episode. We've never had a more requested episode of Level Up than this one right here. Well, here you go. Here you go, everyone. So p- people are people are getting what they ask for. And we're, see, there's already questions in the chat, and I haven't even started talking yet. So you know what? Great segue. Yeah. Why don't we talk a little bit about what Rico is about? And I like the quote here. It's, and I quote, I've often wondered, what mm-hmm. is Rico about? So why don't yes. you tell us what the Real Estate Council of Ontario does and who they are? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a very confusing concept, I think, for a lot of people when you're not involved on the organized real estate side of things. RICO, Real Estate Council of Ontario, is basically our governing body when it comes to dealing in real estate, being a real estate professional, and working with consumers. RICO's mandate is consumer protection, and their job is to... Uh, basically implement and make sure that our rules and regulations, which is currently REBA, the Real Estate Business and Brokers Act, is being followed. Um, It's going to change soon into uh, TRESA, which is the Trust and Real Estate Services Act. But basically, they need to take those rules and make sure all of us registrants are following them. And if we're not, um, they do the punishing they do the making sure that everything is is kept up to speed and consumers are fully protected. So that's their main role. And I think often we get that, like I, I've gotten it confused in the past with local boards and organizations who are more involved with uh, speaking with government about policies and, and things like that to get things changed for the, the profession. Um, that's not the role typically that RICO takes on. It's really about what are the rules? 
are we following the rules? And if not, what are we going to do to make sure that consumers are protected? Oh, to be clear, you don't make the rules. We do not make the rules. The government makes the rules. I say you only because for those who aren't aware, you are currently a director on the board. So I'm going to refer to you as part of RICO. Yeah, like basically the role of the board is less about like an outward facing effort to the registrant population and more about ensuring that the strategic direction of the organization is set in a way that makes sense for where our profession is going and and obviously consumer protection. So we're more involved in making sure that strategy of the organization is set and being followed. So it, it, it's a big misconception, I think, um, because a lot of times people think, oh, the board, you, you know, you're going to come in and and tell RICO what's wrong with, with the industry and, and what needs to get changed. But, you know, that plays a part in it, definitely, like in terms of making sure your voice is heard when those topics come up. But it, it's definitely more so making sure that the organization is running um, well and and making sure that they're instituting the policies and the rules that that are being followed. So to that point, is the board then even in a position to be a sounding board for the membership? So the people who are voting, and I'm just mm-hmm. looking at this from a logistical and from what makes sense because I, I understand what you're saying, but people are voting yeah. for you, hopefully, mm-hmm. or one of the other candidates. Yeah. To represent them, but not really. Yes, yes. and no. So mm-hmm. to to work as one of them at the table, but really, it's not to tell Rico what's wrong with them or what we as realtors believe should be different at Rico, or is it? You, so. Each region is sharing their voice from that particular region because every region is going to have different issues and different problems that come up. And so sharing your perspective from that region is important and it it does come up in discussions and in topics um, all the time, but you're really not, you're not advocating for your region, um, which is un- unfortunate in a way. Like I- I'd love to do more of that, but that's ultimately not what my role is on the board. Um, so I, I definitely, I always appreciate people reaching out to me. And um, you know, just yesterday, somebody reached out to me about issues they're having with newcomers coming to Canada and the um, landlord and tenant act, like the board and 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 the rules, and and it's just so unfair for people trying to get a rent, secure rental without having any information or backup. Um, and I definitely agree. That's a big problem in our profession. Unfortunately for Rico, that's not something that they're responsible for, I guess I could say. And I would say, and I mean, you're a board member of Treb, so maybe you could speak to that a little bit, but I would say that's more in line with what Treb does at more of a local level and speaking with government about issues that, and regulations that come into play for, for, for landlords and tenants, not the sole role, but I think that would be more applicable to a local board. Well, it's interesting because it's such inadvertent gray area at all the different levels of organized real estate, because there's a there's a specific set of stakeholders that RICO has. Like you've said, RICO is responsible for consumers, protecting Mm -hmm. consumers, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's Mm -hmm. the understanding, right? Whereas, yeah, you mentioned, I mean, I'm on the Toronto Real Estate Board and we, our stakeholders are our members who are the realtors. But then you've got organizations like ARIA, who their members are the boards, Mm -hmm. the same way that CREA is. And I think it gets confusing when different parties are voting, different people are responsible for different things. However, the issues remain consistent in the industry. It's just the issues are different between realtors and agents. And you could make the case that the, the, the situation you just mentioned, it frustrates realtors on behalf of their clients who are consumers. So, I mean, it, it touches all these different people, but anyway... Um, we do have another question where um, the question is asked, what are, and you can say as many as you want, but what are two or three of the main areas of focus you believe RICO should be concerned with in the short term? 
Great question. I'd say definitely the transition to TRESA, the Trust and Real Estate Services Act, that's coming this year. Um, there's some big changes, there's some little changes, but I think ensuring that registrants are prepared, adequately prepared and confident in handling the changes to these new rules so that they can still best represent their clients. Um, I think communication is going to be very, very important. So that would definitely be one of the main um, priorities for this coming year. Um, and then I think setting a strong strategic direction as well for the organization, we're coming up to that point with RICO that we're having to set another strategy plan for the next few years. And that's critical, um, especially these days when rules and, and just things are changing constantly for our profession. So uh, just making sure that the strategy ultimately that is set really connects back to where our profession is headed. Like even though we're about consumer protection, we're also about looking to what the trends and, and, and issues that are coming up in the industry to make sure that we're addressing those ahead of them becoming a big problem. So I'd say those are the two biggest ones. So with Tressa coming into play, mm -hmm. um, which is really, it's not a change to the rules, but it's a new set of, some of them are new rules. And I guess yeah. I don't know how much there's rewording of existing rules, but to some degree, there's a lot of that as well. Um, where is the board's role in that? Is it there like as oversight to how Rico is dealing with communicating it? Mm. It's the main, that's the main role. Um, so that's where there's opportunity to have a voice and share your voice from your region and seeing where the needs are. And, you know, I obviously can't make any promises or, or say that I'm going to do certain things, but I think that's where a board member comes in because they know what is happening, what is being said, what, what needs to be done in order to roll this out in a way that's going to be successful. Um, so that communication part is very important and it's important across all levels of our profession, not only at the registrant level, but also at the brokerage level. Like there, there's a lot of opportunity in my mind to collaborate with brokerages, um, to ensure that the, the messaging is, is consistent and it's accurate to what is actually happening. And then of course, to local boards and organizations, because they're ultimately, you know, there for their membership and for the, like if it's a RIA, their local board. So it, it's all like a domino effect, right? So you need to be communicating at all levels. Oh, where I agree. Like well, where does the communication, where should it be coming from? And I mean, maybe that's a loaded question, but you know, when things happen, I think a lot of registrants get communication from a million different sources, from Rico, from Aria. And I mean, they're different, but they're the same. And it almost sometimes feels like everybody's sort of saying the same thing, but not. Like, is there a difference in the types of communication we should be looking for from different levels? I think, you know, Rico is the source, right? When it comes to our rules and regulations. And, you know, they have a very robust, um, they have a robust set of resources on their website. Um, and you know, sometimes it's easy not to, to just quickly look there if you do have a question, but there's a lot of bulletins that go out that relate to current issues that registrants are facing depending on the market. So, um, you know, your number one as a registrant to go to is your broker of record. Don't go on Facebook and ask the question. Don't go to a, a real estate colleague that you think might have the answer. Speak to your broker of record because that is the individual that should be um, answering your questions, especially as it relates to rules and regulations. But relying on RICO to ensure that you are understanding what the rules are um, is is advisable and it's possible given the wide amount of resources that are available. It's just sometimes, you know, you get, it, it's hard to, to always see what's coming out from all of, all of all levels of organized real estate. There's so many emails and so many updates and so many different places to go to look things, things up, but um, definitely uh, make sure that you're, you're reviewing those topics to, to be well-versed in them. Okay, so let's, let's talk about what's happening right now, which is for those who have just joined us, 
voting open today. There is the election for the upcoming RICO Board of Directors. You are one of the candidates in Region 1, and I suspect you'd like people's votes, but maybe I'm mistaken. Nice. So why don't you take a couple minutes to actually tell people why they should vote for you or not? <laughs> um, I think there's a, a big need in at the board level for a wide variety of experience. And, but it's also very important that there's a strong level of experience of somebody coming back into the role. So a second term, um, having a registrant that comes in for a second term is really valuable because you've already gone through the growing pains of the first couple of years on the board. Um, I've said this in my post that I, that I put up yesterday, but even when I first started, everybody that was on the board or had been on the board previously told me the first year, you're just trying to stay afloat. You're just trying to, there's so much information and detail coming at you. And it, it's hard to wrap your mind around. There's a lot of stuff. And so that first year is really about understanding the role, kind of getting a feel for how the meetings work, um, starting to share your voice a little bit. The second year, you get a little bit better. And then the third year, you're pretty much ready to go. And then you're on your way out um, unless you run for a second term. So right now on the board, there's a wide variety of experience levels. And I think that we do need some strong leadership to continue being on the board to remind people of like the history of what things have come to be um, and, to, and to share a really experienced and strong perspective. So that's one of the main reasons I think I should be back on the board again for next for the next term. Um, and I'm always very in tune to everything that registrants are dealing with as a broker of record, um, for sure but also within our own realtor community on this podcast, we're, we're always in contact with all sorts of registrants. And it's really nice to understand the different perspectives we're seeing and being able to share that with the board and with the organization. Um, and that's something I'm always willing and wanting to do. So I'm very, I mean, I know it sounds uh, cliche, but I'm very passionate about this industry and making it better for registrants as well as consumers. And I think I can really do that well through being on the board at RICO. So oh, on that note, um, and I'm, I'm trying very hard not to be controversial through any of this. This isn't meant to be a yeah. controversial type of interview. <laughs> well, but, I mean, not controversial, but like you got, we also have to be Well, very... I, I know also there's certain things you can and can't say, and, yeah. and even just being currently on the board as well, but knowing the recent history, just in politics in general, a lot of elections come equipped with pretty much half of the people out there want change. Like they, for whatever, and I mean, it's because it's a divisive society, but just in general, people are not always happy with the way things are. People always think things could be better. And so in some cases, like you said, there's value in being someone who's an incumbent and who has the experience and has gotten your feet wet for three years learning what there is. To the people out there who are saying, yeah, but I don't want it to be the same. Mm. And I want, you know, not necessarily fresh blood, but I want someone who is in favor of improving and changing and not doing what we've always done. What would you mm -hmm. say to those people? Well, I would say number one, ex as an incumbent, coming back in with experience doesn't mean that I don't want change. I do want change for the better. And I see a lot of opportunity to share that perspective on the board. Um, so I think that that can get misunderstood sometimes, but it's definitely something that I'm always pushing towards. Um, sorry, what was your question? <laughs> I wanted to address that first. <laughs> where, where, what else did you I, ask? I, I, I can I can see the wheels turning. That that I, I, like, and again, shoot. there's there's things there's things you can and can't say, and and so I, I think it's really just the thought of you're coming back, which right. comes with the yeah. benefits, and, and it's the it. benefits that you outlined in the last answer. Yeah, right. Yeah. Talking about the value of experience and being an incumbent, but. Yeah to the people who look at that, not necessarily as a detriment, but right. who have been looking for change. For change, yeah. Or I, looking for, yeah. or whatever the word is you want to use, improvement. What would yeah. you say to them that is still valuable in being someone who's coming back? 
So it, it's so hard and it's, some, it's a frustration that I've had um, in the past to be fully transparent um, is that the role of a board member on Rico, there's not a lot of fanfare or putting yourself out there or, you know, talking about, oh, we just, you know, approved this or it's so exciting. Here's, here's what's coming up. Um, because we, Rico reports to the government, there's a lot of requirements and certain ways that things have to be done. So we do have to be more careful, I would say, in terms of like communication and just, um, being very out there with what changes are happening. Um, so I would say that you can rest assured that there is a lot of really important discussions happening at the board level. And we need people that are not afraid to speak up or speak against certain things that are being proposed or um, just being said, even from other board members, you know, it has to be, you have to constantly be, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, just like, you know, second, not second guessing, but you just got to be constantly looking at other ways to, sorry. Cool. Hmm? To Cole. You don't know what that word is? <laughs> no, 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 no. Every time I talk, it it cuts off. So it's only half the word I'm hearing from you. I'm going to stop. I, ju I, I just asked if the word you're looking for is critical. Critical, yes. <laughs> no, every time I, I said what, and then you'd be critical. I was like, no, tickle. <laughs> like something like that. Yeah, tickle. You need yeah. to be tickle. No, you, you do have to be, crit not critical, but just like, you just have to, first of all, you don't want to do it always the same way that it's been done before. Like just because it seems to work or you seem to be going on the status quo doesn't necessarily mean that that is the right way to keep going. So it's always challenging. That's what the word I was looking for. Like just always challenging um, the mindsets, the way things have been done before. And you need to be confident voting in a board member that it has those capabilities, that has that confidence in really analyzing things and asking the hard questions sometimes that are needed to really move change for move things forward. Okay. Uh, so I don't see any more questions. I don't think in the chat. Oh no, there are. I take that back. Um, are directors involved in setting or voting on budgets directly or a more higher level setting strategy that ultimately determines budgets? Yes. So there are uh, a few committees that if you're a board member that you are part of at least two of those committees. Um, and one of those committees is the audit risk and finance committee. And that, that go, that goes to, uh, looking at the budget, um, approving bigger items and questioning things that are are there and making sure that everything is is running properly. Um, so we don't determine the budget. the The staff at Rico have a a great group of people that do that. But um, part of the audit risk and finance committee is to review the budget and ask any questions that to make sure that it's all in line. Okay. Are there any? parting words, your final words of wisdom to the listening public who are on the fence, because I didn't mention there are 27 people in your race, correct? 26. 27. Oh, I thought it was 27. Yeah. Was it 27? And now it's 26? I think it was. I, I went to count again and it said 20. And I, I think I counted 26, but I think that's wrong. Okay. But yeah, 26. So 26, 26 27. People. There's still a lot. <laughs> that's a, yeah. I mean, I, that, that, that one is going to change everything. But uh, okay, so with that many candidates, um, there's a big decision in front of people. And voting opened this morning and it closes when? March 20th. So two Mondays from now at 4 p.m. So whenever you're listening to this, voting is still open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so anything you want to close with? Yeah, I think, you know, definitely do your research. There when you go to the voting page, you can review all the candidate profiles. If, if people have done videos, you can listen, you can watch the video. 
So it's important to make sure that you're, you're confident in, in the decision that you're making. Um, I've seen in the past and, and continue to see, there's a lot of, and not that there's anything wrong with this because it's good to leverage this, but brokerage affiliations, um, you'll find a lot of times that people stick with voting for people within their own brokerage. Make sure you're voting for somebody beyond just the fact that they are part of your brokerage. Make sure it's a person that you feel confident that they're going to work hard, be, be a good leader. Like there's a lot of work involved to be on the board, like a lot of time commitment, a lot of preparation for meetings. Like it's not a thing that you just slap on your resume and, and think that that's, that's all I really need to be or do. Um, so it's gotta be somebody that's committed to the role and committed to consistent improvement in our profession. And that involves consumer protection, but it also involves being a leader in our industry. And so I think if you are comfortable with who the person is beyond, you know, their, their affiliation with a brokerage or beyond the fact that they've served on a local board or a a RICO in the past, you can rest assured that that person likely, if they've been doing the similar actions over the past few years, they're likely to be that person that's going to do the same thing when they have the opportunity to sit in that, at that board table. So just, just take some time to really make sure you're making the right decision. Um, I know there's a lot of candidates to review in region one, which is uh, central Ontario, but um, it's worth it. And it, it's really important because every, I mean, I know it's cliche again, but every vote counts. Like there's been instances where people have won by, you know, four or five votes. So don't think that your vote doesn't matter because it really does, especially um, in this type of election when there's 26 people running. Um, For this particular year, it's a nice bonus, I guess, to say that there's two positions in region one because the individual that was on the board last time um, ended up leaving uh, early. So now there's two spots open. Um, So two candidates will get on this year, which is nice, but still 26 people with only two winning. um, And 13 more. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. Nice. Well, I'm, I won't say vote early, vote often, because you can only vote once, but vote early. If You only you get one are, vote, only one vote. You, even you only get one spots. vote. Yeah. Um, if you're in Ontario, you have an email already. If you're a licensed realtor or registered realtor in Ontario, it might not be for region one, but that doesn't change the fact that you should be voting in whatever region you're in. Um, there is historically Mm -hmm. very low voter turnout at all levels and all elections across this industry that needs to change. There needs to be more participation on the voting side. I'm happy to see in region one, there's lots of participation on the candidate side, um, which has been an issue in some spots as well, but, um, check your email, open it up. Like Katie said. And if you haven't received an email, you can email RICO to receive one. Um, The email is election at rico.on.ca. So not elections, like election, no S, at rico.on.ca. They're usually pretty quick to respond. They can send you a new link. And then they'll stop. We can put that email in the show notes as well Mm -hmm. to, to all of you who are rushing to, even if you just want to send a note to election and let them know that you really like elections. And when another thing that people um, don't understand completely is the region that you're voting in, it's the region that you're registered with RICO. So if your home address, let's say is in Burlington, but you're, you're, uh, and, and that's the one you're registered with RICO, but your maybe your brokerage is in Oakville, which is region one, um, you have to vote within the region you're registered with RICO and you can't change that now. So um, just something to be aware of. And Rico on their site does show you um, what the regions are and everything like that. So you can head over there to learn more. And if anybody has any questions or want, wants to chat about stuff, just reach out to me. I'm happy to chat anytime. Sounds good. Maybe I will. Thanks. All right. Well, everybody, to all of you in Ontario, get voting if you haven't already. Choose wisely, watch the videos, read the bios, listen to this podcast a couple more times just to make sure you caught everything. And to everybody in other jurisdictions and other areas, make sure you vote in your own regional elections as well. This is just as important everywhere. I think as an industry, we're 
you know, we're represented by people who we want to be representing our best interests. And just like, I don't want to say real politics, but you know what I mean? Municipal and, and all those and federal politics. You've got to be able to have a voice in who you want representing you. So make sure you vote. It's important. And that's all I got to say about that. For listening, everyone. All right. Later, y'all. Yeah. Level up, 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 level up,